Welcome back, Guardians. Today, we are entering the portal of the Starwalker, opening up the third eye, experiencing the luminous indigo violet rays of consciousness unfolding itself in its own awareness of how we are collectively intertwined in a field. And the field itself is not just right here around us. The field is extended and interconnected across the entire universe. Every instance of every moment in every location entangled subtly by the threads of wormholes connected from the cores of every atom to every other atom. The proton web field crafting this lattice work that in itself is so full of energy that if you take a tiny, 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 tiny little drop of it, in that single drop, you have more energy than we see in the entire visible universe. And yet the energy is so well in balance, so in equilibrium, so in harmonic union with itself, vector equilibrium, as Buckminster Fuller would say, that for the most part, all that energy is invisible. It's distributed. It's shared across the field. It's both here and there. It's on this planet and other planets. It's across star systems, across galaxies, across the entire universe. And it is the subtle ways that that field moves out of total equilibrium into what we call curvature or disequilibrium or disharmonic that the tension is created that allows all of the matter and all of the objects that we see everywhere all around us. Without imbalance, without the polarity and ways that the field is out of equilibrium, we would not have bodies. We would not have matter and materia and energy flowing. Just as the wind doesn't blow if there's not higher pressure in one area and lower pressure in another. Just as the tides do not flow if there's not a stronger pull from the moon at one point in time and a weaker pull from the moon in another time. Just as we individually don't really understand and can't contextualize what it means to feel happy really joyfully happily if we haven't experienced sadness and vice versa and so the universe is an emotional flow it is a fabric of energy in motion and we are at an intersection of that space between balance and equilibrium and disequilibrium and this balance point this nexus point of our experience is truly the unfolding of all yin yang self other i you thought this thought that feeling this feeling that everything that we are everything that we are resides in that nexus and from the place of the star walker we began to realize and recognize that not only are we individually in that nexus of experience, experiencing our own journey through the polarity of light, dark, good, bad, pain, pleasure, but that everybody else is too. And that in fact, the entire tensegrity of the universe, the tension that holds the universe together is built on this interplay of yang and yin and balance and light and dark. And so from the Starwalker perspective, from the third eye perspective, and the third eye is the key chakra that we leverage to understand this archetypal energy of what the Starwalker is. The two petals in the old Vedic lotuses for the chakras revealed to us this balance point between the yin and the yang, the light and the dark, the up and the down, the good and the bad, the, all of the things that are part of the polarity of the universe 
which are in turn all the things that make the entire universe happen. And yet those two polarities are also in themselves infinite and intertwined. From a vibrational perspective, we look at the third eye as an 18 pointed star. And this is because harmonically in the body, if we look at the sacral chakra, which is our personal emotional fields down here, lower belly, the sacral chakra is a six pointed star, a six vibration, and is the basic model of the yang and the yin and the trinity together as one. So you always have yang and yin, but there's always a balance point. And in the six pointed star, you've got the yang and the yin and the balance point going up, <clears throat> and the yang and the yin and the balance point going down. And then you have that the going up is a yang of its own, and the going down is a yin of its own. And so layer upon layer, fractally, we're seeing this interplay of balance that exists in our own bodies and is part of the dynamics of our emotion and our emotional experience. When we go up to the next major emotional chakra, the heart chakra, we see that it's a 12-pointed star or a 12-pointed lotus. And this represents that it's both my experience in myself, my six, and your experience, yourself, your six. And so from the heart place, I'm able to both be in my own feeling and experience emotionally, and I'm also able to be with you in yours simultaneously. And in the heart space, it's literally experienced as if the other is the self and as if the self is the other. This is what we come to understand and really viscerally experience when we fall in love with someone. And we go into deep, loving communion states, their emotional body may shift a notch and we shift too. And the moment they shift another direction, we shift there. And there's an instantaneous interconnection that's moving between our hearts, that's exchanging this information. Now our hearts, because that 12 pointed structure is in itself the vector equilibrium, it is the center point of the dodecahedron, the 12 sided structure. It is the bridging point to our singularity of communion with the entire universe everywhere all the time. And so when our hearts open further and further and further and further and further to the point where our full dodecahedron is unlocked to the fractal in connection with the entire universe itself, then we are actually experiencing our whole universe as our body and our body as the universe. And we may then even experience beyond the universe and beyond the beyond and into all the states the avatars speak of that I've incarnated through time to tell us what it means to be infinite eternal beings, being. <laughs> and so the third layer of the emotional chakras up, we have the third eye. And the third eye is, interestingly enough, six, six, six. Now many of us have heard of the 666 and have these associations given to us by Christianity, which says the 666 is the mark of the beast. And there's all of these sort of associations with evil and darkness and all of these things. However, geometrically and uh, geometrially <laughs> or hermetically, when we look at that, we see that the origin of this sort of claiming of this evil encoding goes back to a point where any psychic ability, any ability to see through time and see through space, to access knowledge that people should not have access to, that all of these sort of innate abilities and powers that are part of our human experience and in fact part of our birthright and our human nature, that those things could threaten the power of the church 
as a bridge to connection with the infinite. And when these things were seen as a threat to the church, and in fact, that by somehow removing or clearing the understanding of them, the church's ideals would be able to be more deeply imprinted into the peoples that the church was trying to onboard, well, then there was decisions made. And the same decision was made about the 666 encoded structure as was made about the five-pointed star and the pentagram, which rules and is connected to our root chakra and our body and our connection to the earth. So in the current era, as we go through our massive awakening and transformation and coming into understanding and acceptance of where we've gone wrong and where we've gone off and how to restore our balance with the planet and the ecology of the planet, reclaiming the sacredness of some of these simple geometries, which are not by their nature good or bad. It's not like the five-pointed star has anything good or bad to it. It's just that an idea about it has made it a symbol of the bad things, the things that we're afraid of in our lives. Just like with the 666, it's just become a symbol of fear and mostly fear of magic, of psychic power, of a deeper capacity within us to access the truth for ourselves. And this beautiful lattice of 666 forms an 18-pointed star, which has a nine, which represents the infinite yang, and a nine, which represents the infinite yin. And so this infinite yin and yang, this bridge between those two spirals, is the unlocking gate for us in our own beings to become aware of all that is in its light and dark and good and evil and up and down and all of the balance and polarity and dynamics that make up the whole universe. And it's a gift because it's a seed which allows us to see how everything is interconnected and how everything is part of one thing in its duality. That in fact, everything that is dark contains light and that everything that is light contains dark. And that in every shadow, there is a divine gift unfolding. And without that awareness, we run away from our shadows. Without that awareness, we hide from the darkness. We do something wrong, we have shame, and we close away from it. We, we accidentally screw up, we hurt somebody, or whatever. We pretend it didn't happen. We don't want to look at it. Because we're not willing to see that inside of this mistake, there's actually perfection. There's actually a beautiful, divine gift in that error, that thing that we think was a mistake. And this understanding is so critical to this point in time that we're at of seeing and understanding that when we say, when we collectively or a whole group of people of the your new age or whatever and you're like we're all one we're all becoming one this is a critical piece of understanding that you cannot become one unless you also are able to hold the full awareness and honor for how you are also one in your own self how you are one with other ones and when you are able to see that you are a one, an individual, and that others are also individuals, and then you can see that your individual path, your sovereign path, is intertwined and interconnected with many others, then you begin to actually understand what it means to be one, to actually be a part of everyone and everything and interconnected. But if you just go straight for the we're all one, you lose responsibility. You lose the importance of looking at how your actions affect other people. You just think, oh, well, we're all one, right? So it should be all good if I eat all this person's food out of their fridge because I'm them. It's fine. 
or it, we're all one. So it should be fine if I'm completely not aware of their boundaries or don't pay attention to what they're saying yes or no to. Um, Cause we're all one, right? So everything should be just fine all the time because we're all one. And this, this is a, this is a pattern. This is a habit that is actually disconnected from the link between source and the infinite eternal oneness and the truth of what that actually is and the bridge through the third eye and down into our incarnated beings which are very very much ones and ones and ones and ones and ones <laughs> there are many many facets to us and to who we are beneath the field of that complete unity and the third eye and the star walker path is that first gate where we're actually riding right on that edge of what it's like to experience the totality of all of the universe and the unity and source and the infinite and the oneness and the, the beautiful bridging of everything into the nexus of eternity and how that first breath of eternity separates itself out into a moment of time and a moment of experience. And in that separation, we see you and you and you and you and me and the tree and the ground and the air and the stars and the earth and everything that is our experience is possible because of that separation. Everything. <laughs> Without the separation, none of this experience is possible. Without the separation of the moment that just passed and the moment that I'm in now, none of this communication is possible. Without the separation between one vibration and another, I don't know how to feel pain and feel love. I don't know how to feel sad and then feel happy. I don't have experience nothing and this is the beautiful paradox that both the everything and the nothing and the infinite <laughs> all of which is what it is is always present and existent everywhere all the time infinitely <laughs> and yet I am in this instance of this moment experiencing this moment in time, which is very, very much distinct from the moment of time and the instant of experience that you are having in yourselves right now as you're listening to this. And the universe wouldn't have it any other way because you are you. And without you being you, how am I going to get to know me better? I can't get to know this individual aspect of who I am without you. You are a guiding reflection for me. You help me to see myself because how you interact with me shows me what's possible. It shows me more of the spectrum of time. And the third eye in particular is a beautiful gift in the wheel of the energies of our bodies because whereas our sacral is our very much our own feeling and our heart is very very much the simultaneity experience of empathic connection with others the third eye geometry allows there to be my six my feeling your six your feeling and the six that is transcendent to each of those. So from the place of the third eye, I can both see the field of myself and witness the experience of the energy of who I am and see and witness and experience the energy of who you are and also access the connection point between how what you are and what I am are interconnected. I can see the transcendent. And this is the gift that the third eye can provide both 
the yin and the yang, the infinite nine one way, the infinite nine the other way, and also the, the balance of the full trinity of self, other, and source, interconnection. And so through the cultivation of our third eye and the cultivation of the path of the star walker, we come to begin to develop the discernment of understanding around what is my experience and what is someone else's experience. Without that, we often as empaths get completely interwoven in someone else's experience. This is the heart center and we don't know how to separate them out. Somebody else gets angry and we feel angry all of a sudden. And we're like, well, I'm angry, I guess. But not necessarily. You may actually just be experiencing somebody else's anger. Somebody gets frustrated, somebody's really sad and you're just overwhelmed by the sadness. You feel all the sadness, but you don't know how to discern. And the discernment is critical. And we always talk about discernment when we come into this flow of the third eye because it is very much about being able to see what is yours and what is someone else's and what is the distinction between the two. And we can apply that same discernment to understanding what is happening at different levels of our being and our body. So we can begin to use this geometry to look into our own being and say, Ah, I see. That is an emotional experience that I'm having. And I'm noticing that emotional experience by processing it with my mind. And I'm transcending the emotional current to see it from above so that it's not overwhelming my thinking. And this part of the emotional experience that I'm having is distinctive from the emotional experience that somebody else is having, which I'm also experiencing somewhat because my heart is so connected to them so now i'm able to see that ah that's your feeling ah this is my feeling i see because now i can see into my heart and i can see into my belly and i can discern what's going on in my belly up to my heart versus what's going on in your belly up to your heart and i can also see and feel where and how my mind is creating constructs that may or may not be serving the field of that emotional flow. I may notice energetically that there is a block in the current of the field. And I may notice this not only in myself, I may notice it in other people. And I may go, wow, okay, there's definitely something disconnected here between what's going on in the vibration of the emotional field and what's coming forward in their expression to me. And so the third eye can also see through communication and say, ah, uh huh, I can see that you're representing a part of what's happening inside of you right now, but there may be parts of what you are that you're not representing. And so it is a powerful tool to access discernment and understanding in all of these different parts of our energy bodies. And this also allows us to have discernment between what's going on in our own energy bodies and other beings, other people, and spirits, guides, and beings from other worlds. And so we can experience a spirit guide and discern with our third eye, ask the question, is this being me? Sometimes when we have past life recall, we engage or meet aspects of ourselves in other times, and there's some confusion as to whether or not this being that you're encountering from another time is you or not. And a lot of times when people begin this journey, we try to put those other people from other times outside of us. If you've ever read the Robert Jordan books, this is one of the main character's deepest issues, Randall Thor, is fighting with the other aspect of himself from the past who destroyed the world named Luz Theron. 
and he's fighting. He doesn't want lose Theron in his head. He's fighting with this other aspect of himself and he fights and fights and fights. And it's like, Oh, it's exhausting through the journey. But eventually he comes to realize that lose Theron is him. And as soon as he accepts fully all the way that he did that, that it was him that chose those actions, that it was him who destroyed the world, that it was him who needed to find love again, all of that goes away. And he's suddenly more present and true and grounded and humble in himself than ever in his life because he's actually through discernment come into the understanding that it is him and that that is his self. Now it also happens the other way where there may be a being that's outside of us and we're confused as to if that's, is it a part of us? Is this spirit guide actually me? And then we come into a realization at some point through discernment through working through communication and dialogue and using the third eye to sense what is their will and what is our own will to seeing that they are actually a being they are a spirit guide and that that spirit guide can communicate with us and offer us guidance and that they also may offer us things that they say we should do that we choose not to because we have other guidance as well And so it doesn't overpower our choices. It's like having a close friend advise you, and you may take that advice and you may not take that advice. It's up to you. And so this experience of connection lets us both see through our own third eyes, through our own internal experience, what it is that this other being is communicating. The direct light language transmission of, this is what I need, want you to see, and you see it as if it, you're seeing it yourself. But you know and you feel that this thought or this seeing that you're having is not originating from you, that it is originating from another being. And this, oh, that is a message from you. Okay, got it. I understand that now. Now you can ask questions about it. Now you can unpack it further. Now you can get into a telepathic conversation that actually lead somewhere and not just be stuck in the confusion about it. It also is very helpful because when we begin to truly open up these different capacities of our being, we also sometimes enter into that space with a lot of fear. For people that are encountering seeing other beings, spirits, uh, extraterrestrial entities, like for the first time, it can kind of be terrifying if you've had no context for that or no experience of that in your life before. It's just like, whoa, there's a being in my room. Like, oh, like, what do I do? <laughs> ah, like, are you real? Are you good? Are you evil? Are you trying to control me? Ah, you know, and then it gets really weird when you actually have energetic contact with that being to some extent where you feel something actually touching you. <laughs> You guys know what I'm talking about, <laughs> you know, or in, in the case of my friend I was speaking with last night, you know, she's laying down and she starts feeling this being rubbing on her upper lip like this. <laughs> and she's like, oh, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> she's like freaking out because there's, she didn't have context. I, she doesn't know how to discern what is this? Who is this? Is this me? Is this someone else? Did I do this? Did I open and close my, like, what is going on here? So the third eye is the cultivation of being able to begin to see and discern, ah, got it, like, like, okay, what is it that is my will and my action that I'm choosing here? And you're saying, oh, I'm not actually choosing to rub my lip like this. <laughs> and, and then you're like, well, what is? And you then will see or have an experience of the other that is. So this is like the mind in the solar plexus down here. And what it's doing is it's doing a search. It's doing a universal search, you know, like through the Google of your internet, right? And so your internet, you're going, you're going, okay, uh, 
is this thing me? Is this my choice? And it's doing a search and it's like, nope, this is not your choice. Like, is this the action of another being? Yes, it is. What does this being look like? Oh, okay, it looks like this right now is like a Chinese woman or whatever, you know? Or like, and then maybe later <clears throat> you have another experience with this being and then you think it's the same being, but it's like totally different. And you're like, is this being a dragon? Like, cause you're having all this dragon stuff and he goes up and it's like, yes. And now you're really confused because you thought it was like this oriental chick, you know? And then the next time you experience the being, it's a dragon. And then maybe another time you experience it's the same being, same kind of vibe, same kind of interaction, but it's like some Pleiadian chick. And you're like, I don't know what the frick is going on. This thing must be lying to me. It's telling me all this stuff. But then that's when you have to do the bigger level discernments, right? And this is the really critical piece of this lesson, which is then asking yourself, is it possible that every way that I've experienced this being is true at the same time? And you go, D -d 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 -d, search, yes. So is this being a human and a Pleiadian and a dragon? D -d 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 yes okay because think about it if you asked me all those questions i would say yes to every one of them because in the context of my being through time i have been all those things and when you're dealing with a being that's in the spirit world <laughs> they are in the bridge place between all the kinds of incarnations that they've been and actually they're more than that so as soon as you try to put it in a box or separate out, this is what this being is. This is what this being is. I totally get it. You are this gnome thing, period. <laughs> the being is going to be like, no, I'm not. I'm only a gnome on Sundays. And you're like, what do you mean you're only a gnome on Sundays? And it's like, no, only a gnome on Sundays. <laughs> you know? Because... The being itself, just like any being, is always going to be more than what you think to it. it is. It's always going to be more than what you assign to it. The second somebody meets me and tries to stick me in a box, oh, Adam, he's, he's, that, like, he's just that, that Jedi thing. I mean, I'm okay with Jedi because it's pretty integrated. But if you say, oh, Adam, he's a web developer, I'm like, okay, like only on Thursdays. <laughs> you know, like that's not the wholeness of me and for a lot of the things that we experience in the universe this is really true is that we go through the third eye experience of some level of the different dynamics of the wholeness of something that's there and by the way we're still just translating the infinite nature of what that thing is in other words we're taking the divine and another being and we're breaking it down and discerning different aspects of its divine nature in its archetype, star walker, wizard, eagle, you know, warrior, like uh, you're seeing the different specific archetypal harmonics of the being. And, and then you're taking from those bits of what you're glimpsing there and you're translating it down through the language capacities that you have in terms of how you're going to name it and understand it. So if you don't have a lot of language, you're going to have a really hard time naming it. And then translating that through what you feel in relationship to the being and how you feel about yourself, that's a big factor. And then all the way down to your mind, which then is dealing with basically whatever's left. <laughs> and the mind then is able to say, okay, got it. It's a known being, you know? But that may not be the totality of what is. And the mind, through the process of awakening the Starwalker, and this is why the wizard path and the Starwalker path are so deeply connected, is that through the mind, you must learn to continue inquiring, continue searching, continue asking and opening to the information that's available to you that's up in the field. Because without continuing to open in that way the the solar plexus and the wizard path the mind becomes very fixed and the mind decides this is how it is 
and this is what is. And it gets stuck right there. And it's, it's, it tries to hold it, tries to hold to that decision, tries to hold to that field. And, you know, it's going to keep getting oscillated by the field of the truth because it's not necessarily in total equilibrium harmonic with the rest of the entanglement in space time. So the mind is going to just continue getting vibrated and shaken up until eventually it opens up enough to see more of the wholeness and the whole truth of what is there. So this is important to remember. And likewise, on the other side of the spectrum, in the same way that our wizard self and our mental self needs to continue opening up to the truth of what's coming down and what's landing for us in each moment, likewise, from the other side of the spectrum, our Starwalker self that is accessing and questioning and seeing into the different layers of the universe, seeing different beings and seeing different star systems and seeing different guides and seeing different aspects of ourselves and of each other, it's very, very important that we take all that stuff that we're seeing and we anchor it down into an understanding, that we translate it down into a piece that we can actually hold and integrate and then that piece needs to question, ask, refine. Question, ask, refine. And so this is our dance, is both bringing down the information from the infinite above. This is sort of the Pisces action in the astrological energetic structure. And also rise up with our thoughts to the universe to find out if things are true, which is the Gemini current in the flow. So these two spirals come down and meet each other. The identified, I've already identified, I've already identified, is this true? To I'm discovering, I'm discovering, I'm discovering, is this true? And the two come together and align in the center of our being and help us to see more of who we are and more of each other. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so that's your transmission for today. Thank you guys for joining in on this Starwalker session. Um, and by the way, we always do these pulse sessions every 13 days, although we won't have one uh, in the next 13 days because I'll be out on the playa at Burning Man. Um, we may schedule another uh, pulse session again after that, but we've just done another full round of warrior, weaver, wizard, healer, ambassador, and star walker, unlocking the Jedi anchor in all of us. And all of those sessions are available to watch on video in the Guardian Alliance. You can watch them anytime. Um, if you don't know where those are, you can go to the Guardian Alliance site. And if you go to um, under uh, courses and you scroll down and click on live sessions, um, that's where it's at. Um, and so that's where you can watch any of the past sessions. Um, and thank you guys so much for your presence. It's an honor to be here with you. <laughs>